All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. This is a special edition. Uh, I decided that uh, with the power of Thanksgiving here in the USA, I thought I'd break up our normal content and add in a couple of solo episodes, which are very few and far between on this show since founding it in 2016 in September. I believe I may have only done it three times. So uh, obviously I just aired episode 232, uh, wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And I reflected on all the charity work uh, that we got to do on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and obviously the morning of Thanksgiving. And uh, just to reflect real quick on the newer listeners who might not have listened to that episode yet, for the past eight years, uh, I've had the honor and privilege to be able to go up to Harlem in northern New York City. And uh, there's a strong population of you know, just less fortunate people, lower income. And there's a wonderful woman there by the name of Mary Lanning. And she helps give back for the past 47 years, making 2,000 meals, which this year we did 2,500 hot meals going to the streets to give back. And uh, we'll go listen to that episode to learn a little bit more. It was pretty powerful. And also, she, so obviously her, her program is called the Street Corner Gourmets. Uh, her not for profit is called Yes with an exclamation point, Solutions. So again, if you want more on that, go listen to 232. Thank you. Um, also, I even uh, got to tag in there another powerful organization we got to uh, work with on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which was Tunnel to Towers Program. And that's an amazing organization giving back to people, uh, whether it be military, police, fire, first responders, uh, but their normal organization is literally building homes for people who may have lost a limb, uh, you know, an actual piece of their body. They're, they're trying to get people's homes more adapted and more friendly uh, to their lifestyles, uh, depending on their health condition. And this whole program was started thanks to the Steve, Stephen Siller Foundation, uh, which was a, uh, named after a New York City fallen firefighter who died in 9-11 when the towers came down. There go the name, Tom the Towers. So again, check out episode 232. All right, so the point of today's episode is to be short and sweet. I wanted to give you guys an update. Um, some of you may follow me on Instagram, Facebook personally, or on Live the Fuel. And I wanted to get a little personal for you guys because this time of year is important, right? Holidays, but it shouldn't really matter. It shouldn't matter what time of year it is, right? Come on. I think we should be good to our fellow man, no matter what day or week or month it is. Uh, but th this episode is especially targeted to a very special member of our family, Calvin the Coonhound. And uh, that's right, that's my dog. And not really, not just my dog, it's actually my fiance's dog. Uh, it was really her dog for five years before I met her. And then the past five years that we've been building our relationship together, obviously Calvin became We'll call it my son as well. Since we don't have human children, Calvin is our child. And um, let me tell you, I never would have called him that until uh, the tragic experiences that we've been going through this past month. And I, I wanted to do a podcast to reflect on that because I think I underestimate sometimes the impact of people, individuals, and yes, even animals on our lives. And that's what I wanted this episode to really do for you all was to get you guys to pause and reflect. So I thought, what the heck, let me share uh, some personal uh, components out of my life for you all, because that isn't that what podcasting is all about. We should be getting more intimate. Um, I should be letting you guys deeper into my life. I mean, over the past 200 shows, I know I've definitely softened things up and uh, let you guys in on, on my little romantic adventures and how, uh, Basically, my head was up my butt uh, as I was fighting to fall in love with my fiance, now fiance, obviously back then, girlfriend who broke up with me for three months. But I won her back. That's right. But and part of that winning her back is growing this relationship with Calvin, Calvin the Coonhound. So let me catch you into that. So for those of you who haven't followed on social media, Calvin has not been having a good go. The past couple of months, uh, he. It was weird. Uh, this guy, yes, he howls at every tree because he's a coon hound. Uh, just as, imagine a squirrel in a tree. He will be happy to howl at it. So he can be loud if he wants to. But when he's in our home, he's normally quite quiet. Unless you're a delivery truck driver or a mailman happy to visit our home, he'll be happy to say hi. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, for the past few years, he's been an amazing companion. I loved taking him mountain biking. Um, but then uh, Kristen, my fiance, uh, she was worried that as he was getting older, I might be overworking him because I, I ride pretty fast as a mountain biker. I've done a few races over the years. I don't like to go slow. So Calvin likes to run with me and he's happy to get after it with me. So that's why he and I have our own special bond, which is different than hers. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, um, well, part of that tragic transition is that he, I'm not allowed to take him out biking. Okay, he's not, he's not happy about that. He sees me load the, the bike up on the car, not a happy camper. Uh, you could tell he's jealous. And uh, so we try and walk him, hike him, take him to the park, stuff like that. Uh, and she, she took him to a park a couple months ago, our regular park actually where he loves. And typical Calvin, he'll just go sprinting up across like one of the baseball fields or soccer fields. And he does this weird, I don't know, he dips a shoulder and then just slides into the grass and then rolls over and then just likes to rub his hair, you know, in the grass. It's, uh, it's a dog thing. I, sometimes I feel like as human beings, we should take a page from their book and learn how simple life can be for happiness. <laughs> so um, maybe next time, you know, it's winter time now, maybe next time you're in the snow, drop that shoulder, just roll right into it, roll around, throw the snow around and, and just have fun. Uh, because kids do it. And we used to be kids at one time as well. So we need to be reminded to be a kid or be Calvin to now. Anyway, he goes to do this and all of a sudden, and I'm not there for this, Kristen said he just let out this god awful yelp and did not want to get up. And that's surprising. He's a pretty tough dude. Now granted, he's, as we're recording this here in November 2018, he's a 10 year old dog. So if this whole math is dog years is accurate, that's 70 years old, supposedly it's a seven to, seven to one ratio, uh, but he don't act like it. Anyway, so she was worried because he's, he's a 90, 95 pound coon hound. And granted, my fiance do a lot of CrossFit. We do a, we do lift a lot of weights and she's a strong girl, but uh, <laughs> she was like, I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to get back to the car. So she finally coaxed him back into a walking position and got him back to the vehicle. And for a refresher for the newer listeners, my fiance is actually a doctor. She's, she's a horse vet. Uh, she works on equine. Uh, she, work, she works with uh, horse race farms and, and large animals. So it's not like she doesn't know how to take care of animals. She's even a doctor of chiropractic. I mean, uh, I really leveled up when I found her. So anyway, he, uh, she got him home and he was fine. And we didn't think much about it. And he started limping more. And then we, uh, we noticed that in the evening, we thought he didn't like the new television we bought. Well, I'm, 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 trying, I'm reading between the lines here because I think I he started barking and doing weird howling in the nighttime before bed. And he, you know, if we had the TV on for a little bit, he, he just, it was weird. He would just pick, it didn't matter what show it was. So I thought he just didn't like the screen, but he, he wouldn't even be looking at the television. He'd just be start barking. And, and I read a few articles on this. Um, <laughs> Maybe a page out of the Dog Whisperer book. I don't know. And they, and they say that uh, sometimes uh, dogs are not, dog, dogs know when there's something wrong. They're actually pretty dialed in. Cats are not uh, the only smart uh, animal uh, for pets. And I'm wondering if he knew that the forbidden disease that none of us want, cancer, was in his body. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, Calvin the Coon Hound has cancer. So this was a, a huge shock to us. And I'm, I love to try and maintain that high energy glasses half full. And my fiance, being the educated doctor she is, is a bit of a realist and doesn't like, uh, I, I guess you reach a point where you know too much and it's really hard for her to battle that and fight the fact that, oh, I know that it could be this bad. So, she can't stop thinking about that. Well, let me tell you, the past month and a half, I was getting frustrated. My patience was pushed to the limits. Um, uh, at, at times I had to catch myself. I thought I was being a little bit of a dick because I, I'm like, babe, I was like, I, I need to use, I need to, I, I truly believe in this, ladies and gentlemen, the power of, we, 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 we've slipped in throughout the years of mentions of, movies and books like The Secret, and we talk about positive energy and flow state. So unfortunately, especially through podcasting, I just know too much. Just like she knows too much from the medical world, 
I know too much from the natural wellness, healthy energy, et cetera, et cetera, and the, and the psychology front. And I'm just pushing his arm like, baby, I was like, I need you. I was like, Calvin needs us to be 100% positive. Like just, I, I know things don't look good. And, and, and for you listening, ladies and gentlemen, I think you should take a page out of this, not just for dogs, but also for your, for your family, right? Because when people are not doing well, it doesn't pay to hang around them and be the woe is me and oh, I'm depressed and oh, I'm so sorry for you and that and that and that. Sorry guys, this is not how I roll. So I took this uh, full, full speed ahead for Calvin. And I don't know if it helped him or not, but obviously the, the cancer was real. We, we, we didn't know it at the time. We, we actually, uh, here's a fast forward in the, in the story, take you into some of the financials of loving your pets. Um, I'm going to go ahead and preface this by saying I've never spent this much on a dog ever, but he is a member of our family. So just like you would for if you're a mother or a father, <laughs> there, there's no limits, I guess, uh, and we reached that point. So I'll give you a taste of it. Um, she took him in for an orthoscopic procedure to figure out why he, uh, besides the howling at night, he started limping, and then he, he, he got to the point where he didn't want to use the front right leg. And that was really concerning. Um, so he started hobbling around like a tripod, even though he had four legs. And uh, after the orthoscopic procedure, they found that the there was no cartilage left in his elbow on the front leg. That concerned them. They, not, they don't see that very often. Like, why have one leg and not the other legs? Um, so they took some samples, whatever you call them, biopsies, just in case, sent stuff to the lab, and uh, had concern there might be cancer. Well, obviously, test came back. Cancer. Lovely. So, not happy about that. I think that procedure was like three grand. That's right, three thousand dollars U.S. Hello. <laughs> um, but heck, we can always make more money. That's uh, a little business lesson. The business uh, lifestyle lesson from the show is, you know what? If you're looking for someone else to make you give you an excuse to work hard, for your clients or for your customers. Or get after it in your jobby job. Go try to go for that bonus. There you go, man. Spend the money because you're gonna want to get after it. <laughs> so anyway, three grand into that. Uh, biopsy sent. We're worried. Like, listen, like, we want to save him. Um, they basically said in order to save him or to give him a better life, uh, he's in so much pain that we should probably take the leg. I was like, wow. Okay. Well, he's not using it now. I mean, he's literally hobbling around, learning to become a tripod without the leg because it hurts too much to use it. And we want to give him a better uh, way of life. You know, if anybody listening to this show is from PETA or one of those psychotic animals organizations, I don't care what you say. I mean, we we held back nothing to to help Cal. And I know there's people in the PETA world who are like, oh well, mankind shouldn't even own an animal. We don't really own an animal. Calvin loves us. The dude gets fed better than I do sometimes. Like I buy grass-fed steak and he gets part of my steak. So don't give me this crap about mankind not supposed to have, you know, own animals. All right, sorry guys, I get my little pet, so I don't want to take it to that level. Let's get back to Calvin. It's more important. So anyway, uh, let's fast forward here. We got labs coming back. We're, we're stressed out. Um, he's on pain relievers now, which I know is not good for him. I'm anti-pharmaceutical, I'm anti-drug. We're trying herbal remedies. Uh, Pain relieving oils just to just, just to try to cut back on any drug use. Trust me, we tried it all, man. I mean, this is this is a major commitment. Like Kristen was all in, and uh, we finally get the test back. It does confirm that this cancer did not metastasize. I think that's the right word for it, and it's not spreading. So we can move forward with amputation. So the game plan is set, and the only day they can give us that works as soon as possible is the day that Kristen is flying out of town to Kentucky for a horse event. <laughs> so she was not looking forward to that. And obviously here comes that, that the level of trust in our growing relationship that Scott, I mean, I think I can handle, come on, God. ladies and gentlemen, come on. I, I think I can handle driving a dog, my own, well, my own dog, to a vet to have a surgical procedure. But of course she's worried about that. So anyway, <laughs> I take it down there, I take the day off. Um, from any business activities at all, you know, I, I think I, I think I read two emails. I didn't care. It was all about Calvin that day. Uh, back to lifestyle balance. Sometimes you gotta unplug, man. Just focus on what matters. And 
Uh, he, he went in for a procedure. Uh, he was monitored for a couple of days. They took everything. They took the leg, the shoulder, the scapula, everything. Uh, to make sure there was no chance of anything left behind and to make him into a true tripod um, so there wasn't this weird, like, half moving leg or something like that. We don't want any chance of any cancer being left behind. So uh, now, fast forward to this recording, like, he's hobbling around like crazy. Um, but uh, before I go full fast forward, he, he started having more problems. That's right. You spend, I, I think we're upwards of over 4,000 now, probably go closer to five. And that's right, dollars US. And between the pharmaceuticals, the pain treatments, the IV treatments, the surgery, the earlier orthoscopic, uh, you know, Gallon, Gallon's work committed. <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, Kristen's sitting there, like he, he's back home, he's recovering. He has like one good day. We have another dog over to kind of help him, you know, surround himself with more positive energy. And then we see this weird discoloration, like proceeding from the front of his body to the back of his body down to his rear hind leg. And Kristen, at first concerned, then she's like, well, I don't know. And obviously she's a doctor, but she's a large animal doctor, not a dog doctor. And uh, she's, she's stressed out. She's not sure. She's not trusting herself. She's also the mother, right? But she's the mom. So there's going to be some emotion. That's why you need to outsource, right? Bring the experts in. Don't try to do it yourself. So she's texting her friend, the doctor who did it. And we find out um, so we should probably bring it back in and get some blood work done. Well, sure enough, now we've got renal failure on the list. So for those of you who don't understand renal failure, renal relates to your urinary tract infection, or not urinary tract infection, I'm sorry, but your urinary system, uh, your bladder, your kidneys, etc. cetera. Uh, this is a system that helps remove toxins from the body. Well, he's not doing so well with that. Uh, we have since then tied that to the pharmaceuticals. Um, we just think he was, he just had too much. I mean, pre, uh, pre procedure, after procedure, um, he's never been on something that major and going through that much and he's 10 years old. So like, now we're, now we're not happy. We're not, we're not doing good now, man, guys. I mean, this is, this is getting deep. Kristen's not doing well. Her stress, her emotion is manifesting into me. Uh, I am, I'm doing my best guys. Like I'm, trying to stay positive i'm trying to stay ahead of the front and uh <clears throat> it, 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 you know how i talk about on this show about how your mindset is everything and life's challenges are meant to test you well let me tell you this test uh I, I was blown away and i was not ready for it so we, we pull out all the stops again um the the, the the facility that we did it at is a friend of hers from college they're about 45 minutes from here so, but right away, she takes him to a local vet, puts him through a 24-hour monitoring, or well, we tried doing a 24-hour monitoring, but they're not open a 24-hour facility, unlike her friend's facility. So we went in just for the day, they had Calvin there for the day, and we started running IV flushes on him. So IV treatments, uh, get fluids in his body, start flushing the system, trying to, uh, just trying to help kickstart the, the kidneys, the renal. I mean, he said that he's only got partial, not full beam of uh, renal failure. And then we proceed to move him down to the facility that did uh, obviously the actual surgery at it. So now at that point, it's still not looking good. We, we do an updated blood panel. Uh, we get we get it, we get him down there. He's in for the next two days running IVs again. We're trying to flush him, IV him, and then we'll do updated blood work again. So uh, then, then a snowstorm hits. <laughs> So she has to go down and pick up Calvin in the middle of like our first big snowstorm of the season. We get eight inches of snow. Everybody's crashing cars. Nobody knows how to drive. What should have taken an hour tops to get home took her four hours to get home. That's how bad the weather and people who can't drive are. Um, we get them home. Uh, her being, you know, a vet doctor. I drive over to her office and I get I get some IV bags and we start continuing the IV bag treatment. I told you guys, we're, we pulled out all the stops and blood work comes back. It's starting to improve. So we're like, okay, we have our new game plan. We're doing IV a couple times a day and he's gonna be peeing his butt off of, we gotta help flush his system and see if this is gonna help. We switched out his medications because we felt the most meds were bad. We had a, 
uh, it, it's, we, we started using an appetite stimulant as well because it wasn't eaten properly. And we eventually had to, didn't have to worry about using that anymore because uh, once we switched the meds, they were better on his digestive system. So let's fast forward to Thanksgiving. Uh, so this is obviously basically kind of like a, a Thanksgiving theme part two, right? I, I gave you guys all the positivity from the from the uh, charity work, and now I'm airing you guys an episode about Calvin McEwen. Now, well, he is he's doing better. I'll just I'll sum up as that uh, the blood work is reversing. It's slowly starting to climb. It's not perfect yet. Uh, he's showing more energy. Uh, he's going out on his own. He's, I built him his own handmade ramp. It's in my Instagram history. I literally built a massive like wooden ramp with special carpeted tiles and anti-skid taping on it. So, uh, so now when you walk out the back of our house, there's no human steps. There's a ramp to help him get into the yard. That's right. I'm handy. I can build, I can build things. And uh, <laughs> not just a successful podcast show. So <laughs> the, ramp, the ramp has been a huge win for him post-surgery. Uh, actually, I kind of like it. And uh, you can just run right in and out of the house while we're about tripping over a step or anything. And anyway, the, so he, he's bouncing back, his energy is better, and he's starting to do more activities. Uh, we've moved, at this stage of this, this recording, we've moved the IV flushes into every third day. And then we'll be doing updated blood panels over the next week to see how he's, to see if we can fully reverse this bad boy. But Calvin's on the men, guys. Uh, that's the point of the show is that you got to hear the whole backstory. Oh, let me sum up the financials. Uh, I believe we're at, at, at a maximum of money invested in Calvin. I think we're at a new t- grand total of 8000 That's right. Count it. 8000 U.S. dollars. <laughs> I still can't find that, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, now, granted, listen. Uh, my fiance, she, this was her dog first. She's been very smart with her money. She has no debt. She, I think she has like less than 40 grand in school debt left. You know, after all that education, she went to Cornell University, UPenn. These are expensive schools. But again, she's smart with her money. So she ran point on this. I, I didn't have to put in a lot. I, I paid for the last vet visit. I, uh, I made a donation to the surgeon. Well, not to the surgeon. The surgeon who did the procedure. This is the power of amazing people, ladies and gentlemen. This surgeon does not like charging his fellow veterinary doctors for their own loved animals. So if he's working on a major procedure like ours, which should have cost us a hell of a lot more, um, he preferred to donate his time. That was a three hour procedure and he did not charge us. So the only way we paid for that day was the veterinary facility, you know, every, all, the, all the ancillary stuff, but not his time. All he asked is that we made a donation as many. So you know darn well, I made a donation in his name to his favorite zoo, ASAP, because that is an amazing man, and I thank him for that. I don't know his full name, but just do shout out to Dr. Guy. That's right. He's a cool guy. Dr. Guy. So, all right. That sums up the show. I don't want to keep it any longer. I just want to give you guys an update that over here at Live the Fuel and uh, Kristen and Scott's man's best friend, woman's best friend, our son, our loved coonhound is on the mend. And it's been a roller coaster ride the past two months. And that's all I'm going to say. It, it, for those of you who have your own loved animals, or heck, you ever go through this stuff with your friends and your family, please take some of my underlying points from this show. Positive energy, positive mindset. It's going to take some work. But my thing is this don't hold back. Like, what, what if that helps? Being a negative Nancy about this is not going to help. Coming home every night and crawling up on your dog. And sitting there and crying on him. That's right. She was doing that. I'm like, that is not going to help him. Dogs, when I've seen this, love to absorb your bad energy. They want you to feel better. That's why they're so good, such good companions. Well, he does not need that extra stress on his body and his energy and his spirit. So I'll leave you at that. Thanks for tuning in to another Little Fuel Show. Don't worry. We'll get you back to the normal programming, okay? I'm just doing something special this year. It's been, it's, the show's over two years. I'm just really inspired by the holidays. Uh, we had such amazing events. Again, go listen to episode 232. We learned about all of our Thanksgiving adventures. Um, but I, I just want to keep that positive energy flowing. I know this show started off a little bit, little, little down about Calvin, but he's on the men, people. Um, so we'll have one more episode into the personal lives here uh, of Scott, Kristen, and Calvin. And uh, 
I just want to dedicate this episode to Calvin Coonhound because he's bouncing back and we're not giving up eight grand later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to another powerful with the fuel show. Again, we're here to fuel your health, your business, your lifestyle. I hope I did that today. We'll talk to you guys again soon.